Hello guys, hope you enjoy this video and I hope you de don't get too bored along the way. But at the end of this uh, um, uh, lecture there will be um, a very fun, um, there will be a very fun, uh, almost like experiment if you want. Now I don't know if any of you have done it, but actually um, I'm going to be showing you how to do the bottle top, um, bottle top uh, rockets test, which is basically when you get this uh, little um, camera filter or any other tight container, you basically send it flying really, really high. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But first, I'm going to talk about the planets. Uh, the planets, there are actually uh, nine in total. Uh, I don't think that's including Pluto, um, unless I've got my facts wrong. But the um, the planets, it's they it, they are really incredible. I mean, you thought that it's not just us out there. It's um, so so many, so much more, and I just find them fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, I'm sure you've all. Uh, the first planet, well, not really planet. I'm going to uh, show you about is the sun, and the sun actually has an age. It's round about uh, four billion years old. It was the first thing to be created. In the solar system, when the, the Big Bang occurred, all the rocks came together um, to create the sun. Uh, I'll, I'll explain the Big Bang in some of my other videos. But the sun is um, is very, very big. It's about, I would say, it was about it's about um, 30, 33 thousand times one Earth. That's how big it is. That's in kilometers. Uh, it's very, very big. And the sun is fascinating because it's actually the only thing that can that we need for life in our planet. It's if we didn't have sunlight, nothing, nothing would survive. Even the plants that don't need as much sunlight as others still need light. So it's extremely important. Um, the the sun. I'm going to talk about sunspots now. The sunspots are the hotter places of the Earth that sometimes can create flares. Now, um, the surface of the sun is around about 3,000 degrees, and the sunspots are a two degree, a uh, couple of 2,000 degrees hotter, so some of them even reach 5,000 degrees, so you definitely want to step in them. You can fit something like four Jupiters in one of these spots. It's incredible the size that the sun and the power that it has. Um, if you were travelling in a spaceship, you could only get a couple of hundred thousand kilometers before you're completely burned up. You can't get close to it at all. Um, back to going about the flares. Basically, um, when a sunspot is creating energy, sometimes that they create so much heat that sometimes they give off a flare, almost like a spark, um, a stray spark in a sparkler. It basically is so powerful it can transmit all the way across the um, solar system right up to Neptune and maybe even Pluto. It's so strong. And um, actually, uh, the one to experience this flare is actually us and all the other planets. As the solar flare hits Earth, it actually creates an electrical charge. So if my hand represents the Earth, as the solar flare energy is coming to Earth, it actually spits in two. So it's created like a, a long shape across going right through the Earth. And actually it's now funneling magnetic energy because that's that what it extracts as well. It's extracting um, solar and magnetic energy all the way to the top. And um, this actually at the top creates the northern lights. This is why we see the northern lights on the Aurora Borealis if you have um, been watching um, some of the programmes on BBC. But um, basically, it's when the solar flare energy goes so fast through the Earth's atmosphere, it's reacting with some of the substances in the air, such as oxygen and, and nitrogen and, and lots of different things, and it creates different shades of colour. Sometimes red, sometimes blue, you can see all different colours in the uh, Aurora Borealis, and it completely stretches right across the North Pole and the South Pole in some cases, because remember, it funnels to the South Pole as well. And other planets experience this. We're not just the only planet. Um, Jupiter experiences probably the most um, aurora borealises, massive ones to a big scale. Because the planet's so big, the solar flare energy splits so much 
that it makes a massive turn when it gets to the top, creating a, an amazing, colourful night sky. So, the sun, obviously I said before, is, um, no one has been to the surface of the sun yet, but I'm sure, you never know, in a couple of days, well, not days, obviously, uh, sorry, in a couple of years or um, in the future, our technology might have adapted to go to the sun. I mean, that's a big maybe. Um, at the moment, they are actually trying to drill to the centre of the Earth, which is a bit of a silly idea. Now, when drilling to the centre of the Earth, you've got to be very careful not to erupt the crust and molt too much. But you never know. We might be exploring the sun one day. You never know. So that's the sun. Now I'm going to go on to the first planet, which is Mercury. If I just get my computer up again. It's very amateur, this. But I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see, is uh, here we have Mercury, the closest planet to the sun, and it's the first planet in the solar system. It's actually the smallest, not counting Pluto, because Pluto is now classified as a dwarf planet. It's uh, minuscule. So the um, smallest planet is in fact now Mercury. Now Mercury is really just like the moon. It's just almost a, a massive rock, but obviously a lot, lot hotter. Um... Funny sort of temperatures. Daytime it can reach up to plus 200 degrees because it's really, really close to the sun. Or maybe even minus 200. And that's actually because uh, when it's pulling away from the sun, they have night and day like us. And when one half has his night and one half has the day, the night side is actually pointing out into the blackness. There is no sunlight because um, Earth... Even in darkness, we're pointing a tiny little bit towards the sun, getting um, some warmth in the night. But in the day, there is, um, in, in the night, sorry, there is, it's pointing straight out into the blackness. So no heat at all is emitted into it. And because it's a rock, a uh, very fragment rock, very delicate rock, because of all the heat that's created, all the cracks in it, the heat escapes almost immediately. That's why it plummets to round about minus 200 degrees. Uh, it's not really a very interesting planet. We haven't obviously attempted to go to it, but um, uh, we it's something that we would probably want to do in the future. We might create a probe that might go on. Voyager 1 has discovered Mars, uh, discovered Jupiter, Saturn, uh, um, Uranus and Neptune even Pluto, and it's actually now in the next solar system. So it actually um, is in the next solar system, and so actually nothing has seen two planets, which is Mercury and Venus. But one day we might. Uh, the kilometre around uh, Mercury is about 58,000. It's pretty small compared to Jupiter and other countries. Uh, countries, sorry, planets. Um... As I said before, it's the smallest, has the smallest mass, which is about 500,000 um, cubic metres of, of um, planet. And um, it's pretty a bland planet, but maybe we might want to go there in a couple of uh, decades. You never know. Um, if I just get my um, computer back up again. So, here's... The second planet we're going to do is Venus. I don't know if you can see that. Venus there. Um, Venus is a fairly sized planet. This is about the same size as Earth. It's probably a little bit smaller. Uh, and it's probably a little, depending on how you look at it, maybe a little bit bigger than um, Mars. And Venus is actually, uh, has an amazing history, a phenomenal history. When it was created just after Mercury, um... It's very, it's a very early planet, and it's, um, it's actually the sister of um, Earth. Now they do Earth and Venus do not have anything in common. Venus is basically a fiery bits of gas in there. It's a not very nice place to live. Um, Earth is lovely and habitable and has oceans. Um, Venus does not. It's a rock, lifeless thing, and Earth is a joyous and life thing so really they don't have anything in common but it's all to do with the history they have in common and um, they say venus might have actually been a planet like ours once upon a time they say that uh 
Venus has, um, has supports of water. They found water on Venus. They've also found other um, kind of smaller things that suggest um, Earth, like magnesium and iron, things that you would find on Earth. Calcium, which is also uh, uh, critical for life in some cases. And so its history is a bit like Earth's. Earth started out as a, a gas, fiery rock ball, and so did Venus. And it's basically gone up through the ages from being a dead planet to being some planets, a planet that might have a tiny, tiny little bit of life on it. It's a bit bigger than, uh, it's, it's obviously a lot bigger than um, uh, Mercury. It's about uh, um, 90 uh, uh, thousand kilometres around. It's um, it's an amazing planet. I mean, you... Um, it's well worth researching, and maybe we will go there one day. It's actually, um, the surface is pretty hot, uh, plus temperatures of 100. It's still very close to the sun, that's why it's still going to get very hot temperatures. But the night is going to be um, considerably hotter, because again, it can face the sun more, making more heat come in. And um, it's a pretty nice pair. Now, obviously, we're going to Earth, which is the one that we like. It's the third planet in the solar system. It's in the small band around the sun, right around the sun, which is called the inhabitable zone. Can't even say it. Um, but this is basically where um, we're the only thing in the in the zone which uh, can support life. That's basically what it means. The ring around the sun that can support life. And there might be other things in there, small rocks uh, that might have life on them. It, it's very highly unlikely. There might be asteroids that might have um, supplies of Earth, like uh, iron and magnesium, calcium. And our Earth also has an amazing history. I'm going to give you a short history of Earth, and then we'll go on to the next planet, which is Mars. Now, as I say ago, about 2.5 billion years ago, Earth started off as the third planet created from the Sun. It's basically just a, a big, big gas. It used to be gas, filled with gas. Uh, careful what you say there. But it's um, it was just a fiery giant, basically. It was nothing could live on there. It looked a bit like Mercury, but just a bit bigger. And that's really all it had. And Earth had loads, loads hundreds of volcanoes. So many volcanoes was erupting. Something like every one minute, a volcano would erupt on Earth. That's because the lava underneath it was so active at this point. We only have a few um, volcanoes left on Earth now because of the life that's flourished from it. But it's also an incredible planet to live on. Sorry if you can hear that, that's my door squeaking. Anyway, um, uh, it started off as that about 2.5 or 5 billion years ago, we're not sure. But as this, uh, as this volcano erupted, it actually produces gases like CO2, um, uh, sulfur dioxide, um, uh, nitro oxide, various other toxic gases in our case. But things like nitro oxide, which can actually support nitrogen, it actually might have been quite useful. So, um, it's, it's, it's an incredible planet, as I said before. And um, so at this point, not much is happening. And... Um, but as these gases are being created, the sky is filling up with, with clouds and clouds of what seems to be maybe even the first rain clouds. And of course, there's no water at this point, so there's nothing to suggest that it can water. But the, again, the heat from the lava and volcanoes rise, creating a type of heat filled, a, a mixing of the sulfur, which is a kind of a liquid, actually creating a type of rain. And at this point, it rains. We get our first oceans. This is um, about uh, 1.5 billion years ago now. And um, we have seas. They're not particularly very good seas. No life can be on because they're so full of gas. But this means that the planet can now cool down. And as it cools down, it releases these other, uh, these other gases that couldn't have been supported at high temperatures. Things like nitrogen are filled with the air. And sulfur and carbon dioxide is the first gas to be created on Earth that couldn't have been done. And this is where we get our first life. Blue-green algae was one to be one of the four first things in water 
the, the first things on Earth. And it flourished in very harsh conditions, very harsh water, and basics of just plain um, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. That's what it survived on, carbon dioxide. But of course we know that photosynthesis could have occurred when the plants take in the carbon dioxide into themselves and release oxygen. So now we have oxygen. Oxygen now can fill the air. So now other plants can flourish on land, such as feeds and um, thistles, other bits of weed, grass. So now it's becoming to look more like a greener planet. Uh, after this happens, we don't really know really how an animal could have gone up, but we might have thought that it might have been some kind of smaller bacteria. Bacteria are also the first things that could have swarmed and evolved into a fish, and the rest is history. Until we get to now, where we get human beings. And that's basically the brief history of Earth. Now, I'm going to quickly go on, hopefully um, not boring you, if I just look at my computer here. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm just seeing how long it was, because I don't want it to be too long. I'm sorry if I'm boring you at this point. Um, quickly moving on now to uh, Mars. Uh, Mars is a tiny bit smaller than Earth, if I've got this right. It's a bit smaller. Not much bigger than Earth. But Mars also has a very big history of it. They say it was exactly like Mars. It was exactly like Earth, sorry. And maybe supported tiny bits of life, such as um, um, uh, bacteria. Now, a meteorite a couple of uh, billion years ago strike, striked um, Mars. And they said this gave it a gift of life and uh, metal such as magnesium and iron and calcium and all the different types of things to support life. And at this point, um, all the things come together, they hit Mars and um, the, the metal settle on Mars. And because of volcanoes, you basically create the whole process of Earth all over again until you end with the bacteria stage. Now, this is when it might have gone all a bit pear-shaped. Apparently, coming from here, a massive, ginormous meteorite struck Mars, basically destroying um, half of it. I don't know if I've got my facts right here, but I think that's how it worked. It might have been Earth, but I think it was Mars. And its core is completely made of iron, and that made the core weak. And the core almost broke down, you could say. And it actually caused water on Mars to simply just leave the planet, just go away. So basically, we come here today. The water left, that means life left. That means it went back to being a fiery, gassy, um, careful what you say, <laughs> and um, volcano planet. And that's it. The next planet we're going to do is uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest planet ever. It's so big. You could fit about 25 Earths in the Jupiter storm. It's just ginormous. It's the gas, first of the gas giants. And the gas giants are non-livable. And actually, Jupiter doesn't really contain much. Mostly gas and, uh, gas and tiny bits of rock. So really, you would kind of just fall straight through. So um, basically, it can change a lot of gases. And it has storms. These gases create storms of twisters and whirlwinds. And that spot on Jupiter is said to have the longest storm lasting over decades and decades and decades. And um, they say it could last forever. I'm just quickly going to move on to Saturn now so we can get to the fun experimental bit. Um, Saturn is, uh, is another one. It's the ringed ones. And in the ring it has bits of... Um, uh, ga it has bits of ice, which could create water. It has bits of calcium. So actually, they say again, could there be life in Saturn's rings? It's probably highly unlikely, but maybe there could be. It's basically a little bit smaller than a um, little bit smaller than uh, Jupiter, and um, it's basically the same. They go on to Uranus or Uranus or however you want to say it, and you have to be careful what you say nowadays. But um, it's basically the cold, one of the coldest planets. It's um, one of the gas giants again. They're getting a bit smaller than Saturn, but not much. 
it's very, very um, gassy, and that's it's very, very cold. Again, temperatures reaching up to minus 400, 500 degrees, very, very cold, and not much happens. It's got a ring that goes vertically around it, and not much happens in there. Uh, last planet we're going to finish up with, or maybe the last, is um, Neptune. And it's basically a, a copy of Uranus, except it's smaller, and there's no ring. Uh, it's basically the same temperature, just a little bit colder, because it's a little bit further out. And then, of course, there's Pluto, which is the dwarf planet. Um, the dwarf planet is basically a planet that is not as big as a, um asteroid it's smaller than an asteroid but it's not as big enough to be classed for a planet hope i haven't bored you i'm sorry if i have but um uh, please subscribe and um we'll be doing the short um experiment in a minute thank you hi guys so this is the uh fun bit of the experiment as it were I hope you uh, didn't find the lecture uh, too boring. But anyway, this is all the stuff you're going to need. Um, there's lots of things you can use. And for the rocket fuel, you can use uh, this uh, soluble paracetamol. And it's going to create enough gas to uh, shoot it off the ceiling. Or you can use the Alka Skelter original tablets uh, made with citric acid. creates enough gas. And as you can see, there's, there's nothing in here, so I'm going to have to use panadol tablets um, uh, with a bit of sellotape and uh, using one of these toy things you can actually use make sure you sellotape the holes up at the top make sure there's lots of tape on it so it's nice and tight or you can use a um, film lid Ooh, or you can experiment with lots of different containers but really I'm going to use this one because this is the only thing I can ha that I have um, so let's see what happens Start by opening the uh, lids and placing the tablet in. As you can see, uh, only use a tiny amount of the uh, powder. Only use a tiny amount because it is very strong. You don't want to waste the medicine. Then you have to get your water and pour it in. Now, I'm just warning you at the moment that this might not work because I actually haven't uh, really tried this yet. But hopefully it will. Although, if this doesn't work... It be a failed experiment but it's still be an experiment right I'm just gonna try and put my camera down here try and show you it I uh, hope you can see this right I'm gonna quickly pour a tiny bit of water in here and then I'm gonna put the lid on shake it up a bit it's down back bit of fizzing going on in there Please work. Now, if this doesn't work, it might not necessarily work, but it should. In theory, the lid should come off. Okay, so. Oh, hang on. There's definitely a bit of gas coming from there. No, <laughs> the answer is that doesn't work. But it should work with other things such as cat lids. Anyway, we might have a try again in a minute. Sorry about that. That's a bit of anti-climax. But at least I'll show you how the steps do it. So make sure you get some water and then your cat lids with uh, the tablets. Put it in. Or you can always use vitamin C tablets. Cut enough gas. Or you can even use um, uh, vinegar and uh, baking soda. Uh, that, that creates... Uh, Kind of a, a, a nice reaction. So, um, yeah, let's see if we can do the vinegar one. Okay, so, yeah, maybe the, um, maybe the, uh, the, uh, bottle top rocket didn't work, but now I'm going to try and do, uh, the volcano. Now, it's still using the same principle. Still has the, enough gas to create it to shoot the um, the out of the volcano. So let's have a go. So first of all, we put the vinegar in the uh, lid like that. Might be quite a lot of it. It's a bit trippy. Let's 
I do need some uh, baking powder or baking soda. This should work, as I was all going to have uh, two fails. So, let's have a go. And again, let me just try and move some of these things out. Just gonna place... Volcano. Hello. <laughs> right. Um, place baking powder in the top. And hopefully, we should see if we look in the top, some reaction occurring. There's a lot of, there's a bit of reaction going in there. If we just put a bit more this in. Again, this is very tough touchy this type of experiment. And if we just put some more power in the top. Still coming out the top though. There we go. There we go, look, there we go, the start to throw the bottom now. What I just did just there to make it go quicker is you might have to put in a tiny bit of water to make the reaction go quicker. And this is the result. You can also um, food colour it to make it look red. We have one failed experiment, one that seems to be working. I think that's a bit of roll call. Then put a tiny bit more water in. Not very much, don't need very much. There we go, look, really starting it now. If you poke it a little bit. There we go, guys. One um, failed bottle top experiment, one seems to be worked um, experiment. So I hope you've been watching my. Uh, first video of Science of the World. Hope please subscribe. And um, there we go. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video.